All right, so in this video, I'm gonna walk through and break down the psychometric chart and show you how to read the chart. So at first glance, the psychometric chart looks pretty overwhelming. There's a lot of numbers, a lot of lines in there, but if you really break it down to its individual components, it's actually very simple once you get the hang of it. So I've drawn just a, the basic outline structure of the chart, and I'm gonna go through these uh, psychometric properties, properties of air one at a time here and kind of show you how this works. Okay, so if you were to take a psychometric chart and just look at the X axis and the Y axis and then this curve here, which I've drawn is called the 100% saturation line, you can get kind of a framework for the chart itself, okay? And all the other lines just fill this in, okay? If you just start here with the basics, and I like to start with dry bulb because that's the easiest to understand. We all know what dry bulb temperature is. You walk out on your porch and you got a little temperature gauge there, a thermometer, that's the dry bulb of the air outside. It has nothing to do with the humidity. It's just looking at the scent, what we call the sensible only temperature in the air. So the dry bulb lines are located on the, on the, or the dry, the dry bulb quantities are located on the X axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this in put a little DB in there for dry bulb. And the way this works is, as you move from left to right, you're increasing the dry bulb temperature, and you move from right to left, you're getting cooler, okay? Now these lines run vertically. So I'm gonna kind of model what's going on in the office here to kind of break this down to show you how that works. So in my office right now, it's roughly about 75 degrees. Now I've got this big ginormous psychometric chart, which I kind of use as a guide to draw this. And I know that 75 degrees is probably about right, I don't know, right here-ish, okay? We'll try and get this as accurate as we can. So here's my ruler, so I'm gonna draw right here. And we'll go ahead, what did I say that was 74? So 74 degrees. Now if you could read my handwriting there, but 74 degrees dry bulb. So anything on this line, anywhere on this line represents 74 degrees dry bulb temperature. Okay, if I was to draw in another line right here, Let's draw it about right there. Okay, this would represent a higher dry bulb temperature, maybe 85-ish degrees, it's not to scale, so I don't know. So we'll just put 85 there for the heck of it. Okay, so if we were to move this way on the chart, we're increasing in temperature, moving that way, we're getting cooler and decreasing in temperature, so that's the dry bulb, that's how it's located on the chart. So, next, let's look at wet bulb. Now, wet bulb has to do with the moisture in the air, okay? The way that's measured is there's actually a thermometer. I mean, we use these digital devices to measure them today. The wet bulb in this office right now is about 63 degrees, which is nice and, and comfy. The way it's measured, it used to be measured, is you'd have a wet bulb, thermo you'd have a thermometer, a glass thermometer, and you'd have a wet wick on the bulb of the thermometer, okay? So what happens is if the air is drier than that wick, which it should be most of the time, right? The, air, the water will evaporate off of the wick, provide a cooling effect, and it will decrease the temperature, okay? So the wet bulb temperature is always lower than the dry bulb temperature. Now how those lines, so it has to do with humidity, right? The higher the wet bulb, the more moisture in the air, the lower the wet bulb, the lower the moisture content of the air. So how these lines sit on this chart is like so. I'm gonna draw in again, I'm gonna try to kind of model what's going on in the office here. It's 63 wet bulbs. So I'm gonna say that's probably somewhere right here-ish. Okay, we'll see how this, how this shakes out. So 63, and I'll write a big WB right here. That's wet bulb, okay? wet bulb and dry bulb. And what happens here is, let me draw the line in first, then I'll show you kind of the way it goes. So if I was to draw this wet bulb line, it looks something like this. 
Okay. Let's say that's fairly accurate. Fahrenheit. So as we go up or in this direction, we're increasing the wet bulb. And as we go in this direction, we're decreasing the wet bulb. So if I was to draw another line right here, let's say 73 wet bulb, we would be increasing the wet bulb temperature. If I was to draw a line down here, we'd be decreasing the wet bulb temperature. So that's how those lines sit, okay? So the diagonal lines like that. All right, so next, I guess, let's look at relative humidity. I'm gonna change the marker, dump, marker color here so we can see it. I'll go with the red here. Relative humidity is the amount of moisture in the air compared to the amount it can hold at a certain given condition, okay? So it is relative to the temperature. It's different than humidity. Relative humidity and humidity are two different things. We've done a lot of videos on that on our YouTube channel, HVAC TV. Go check that out. Shameless plug right here. Okay, so, so the wet bulb, the relative humidity lines follow this curve here. Okay, this, is the, this, is a, this would be 100% RH. Okay, fully saturated. The, the air cannot hold any more water. What happens after that? You get rain, you get fog, etc. Okay, so the relative humidity lines run kind of something like, and again, I'm gonna to try to model what's going on here in the office, which is 55 degrees RH, so we know it's probably gonna be, again, this is not to scale, so, I don't know, something, something along those lines, no pun intended, right? 55%, excuse me, RH. Now the way the humidity lines work is as you go this way, you're increasing humidity. And as you go that way, you're decreasing humidity, as you can see, because this is 100% saturation line. Okay? So that's the relative humidity line. So if you were to draw, if you were to take the, all these lines, right? If you were to take one degree, 86, 87, 88, 89, draw all these vertical lines, the wet bulbs, 63, 64, 65, and draw all these, slanted lines, and then you took all these curves and drew out. That's how the chart is built. So I'm gonna go back to my chart. I don't know if you're able to see this on the camera very well, but that's how all these lines are put together. It's basically that simple. Now there's some other values here we haven't talked about yet, which are extremely important. So the good thing about the psychometric chart is if you have two points, you can pick any other point off of the chart, right? So we know We'll use, again, we'll use our office here as an example. So um, we know that it's 74, 63, and 55% RH. So we know that it's right there. Now, on the, on the Y axis, which we haven't talked about a whole lot, is where you find your moisture content typically, okay? So the sensible temperature of dry bulb, cooler, warmer, think about this direction as your humidity level. So higher humidity, lower humidity. Now we're talking about the actual humidity in the air, not the relative humidity, okay? So the actual humidity is measured in grains, so grains per pound of dry air. Typically we just call it grains, right? So if you were to think about, if you were to grab a pound of air, which I think is like two cubic feet or something of air, I'm not really sure. So if you take that and wring out all the moisture of air, uh, the, the actual water that would fall out could be measured in grains, which is like a mass, okay? And that would be the actual true amount of moisture in the air. So grains, when you hear grains, it's the amount of moisture in the air, okay? So the, the line for grains run like this. I don't have a ruler long enough to get along the whole, you know, but they run basically the whole width here. I'll draw this like this. Ah, getting a little sloppy here, it's okay. We're doing the best we can with the old fashioned whiteboard, which I really like. I like the old fashioned whiteboard. So if we were to take, um, so this would be the grain level in the space here. And I didn't even look this up, but let's say this is a good, a good um, practical example. So I've got 74 degrees dry bulb and 63 wet bulb. So 74, 63, one, two, three. And then I think it's 55% RH. So Let's see here. I'm going to say 65-ish grain, something like that. Again, you could look this up online and plug all this in and get the exact amount. So 65 grains 
per pound of dry air, basically. And again, we usually just say grains, like 65 grains, okay? That's a typical space in the 60s, you know, your typical grains for your, your space. So as you go up, the grains increase, and as you go down, the grains decrease. So if you were to take and draw these little lines in here, et cetera, you get that. Now, horizontally on the psych chart, you also have your dew point lines. So dew point is, is the, um, the temperature at which condensate, condensation will occur on a surface, right? So if you've got a can of soda, let's say in your office, that's just out of the fridge, it's 45 degrees. If the dew point's higher than 45 degrees, you're gonna get condensation on the, on the can, okay? So if the dew point in the space is less than 45, you won't get any condensation, okay? So dew point also runs the same way. So higher dew point as you go up, Lower as you go down, the dew point in this space is 57.2. And again, not to scale, I don't know if all these numbers are extremely precise, but you get the, you get the picture, right? And I already forgot what I said. 57.3-ish, uh, something like that. So 57.3F, okay? And the dew point lines also run horizontal. So they run in the same way that the the grains run. Okay, now there's some other things on the chart here which I'm not gonna go into because we don't really use them very often. Dry bulb, wet bulb, relative humidity, dew point grains. 99% of the time that's what we're using when we're talking about the psychrometric chart. And when we're talking about, while we've got this chart up here and it's, a, it's getting to be a mess, I'm gonna mess it up even more. So when we're talking about psychrometric processes like cooling, heating, uh, dehumidification, humidification. Here's kind of what that looks like on the chart. And I'm going to go to another, another color marker here. So when we're talking about moving around the chart, okay, let's say we started here and we we're to move in this direction. Who can guess what we would be doing? We're going from hotter to colder. We're cooling that air. So that's just the cooling process. Are we adding or removing any humidity? No, we're just taking the air from one point to another point and we're sensibly cooling the air. There's no dehumidification, there's no humidification. If we were to take that air and move in this direction, what would we be doing? We'd be heating that air, right? So that's heating only, sensible heat only, no humidity added, no humidity removed. You know that because you're not moving up or down on the chart. If you were to take this point here and go downward, what type of process do you think that would be? Well, that would be a dehumidification. We're removing humidity. If you go from here to here, have we changed the temperature, the sensible heat? No, we're still in the same sensible heat, right? Because the, the dry bulb lines run, run up and down. They run vertically. So if you were to take this air here and go in this direction, what would that process be called? Humidification, right? We're adding humidity to the air. You know that because you're going in this direction. Sensible heat does not change. So when you're going up and down again, think of, think of humidity. When you're going left and right, think of sensible and temperature. Now, we don't typically move on the chart in these directions, except for like heating, we almost always just go um, in one direction here, right? It's sensible only. We're, sometimes we heat and humidify, it just depends on what we're doing in space. But let's go ahead and look at a combination of these. And I'm gonna pick, let's go with the purple. I don't think we've used purple yet. So when we move, I'm gonna start a new spot here. When we move from here in this direction, what type of process do you think that would be? And we moved from a higher to a lower condition in terms of the y-axis, right? So that would be a cooling and dehumidifying top to bottom kind of thing, right? So this is a cooling and dehumidify, cooling slash dehumidification process. Where do we see this often? Well, we see this in cooling coils, right? Because the cooling coil is colder. If it's working right, it's colder than the sensible temperature. So if you have you know, 90 degrees entering the cooling coil and super wet, you're gonna cool the air. And what else are you gonna do? If that cooling coil is lower than the dew point of the air, 
which in this case it should be, you'll be removing moisture. So that's cooling and dehumidifying. So what if you're going from, I don't know, here to here? Okay, what do you think is going on there? So we're moving from left to right. So we're adding a sensible heat and we're moving from a lower to higher position on the chart. So we're adding humidity. So that would be a heating and humidifying scenario. Okay, so I think that covers just about the basics of psychometrics. Again, it seems real overwhelming, but if you really break down this chart, start with the outline, the Y and the X axis, and then the humidity lines, that's kind of where I like to get people to start because those are easy to grasp and we're all relatively familiar with those terms. And just take it slow. And I can tell you in my career, knowing the psychometric chart has helped me tremendously. And I was fortunate enough to be given a foundation of the, the psychometric chart in the beginning. So, hey, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you.